Outlast Trials just released and with it came some new experiments and content to get into. However, in this video we will be breaking down what exactly happens within the very first trial, Snitches Get Stitches, and what the player and character are tasked with doing to continue onwards. And since this is the very first trial, let's provide some context to who you are within the Outlast Trials. Firstly, the Murkov Corporation has created a secret facility that is comprised of dozens of warehouses, underground tunnels and rooms, and have given the control of the facility to a Dr. Hendrik Jolier Easterman, and he is in desperate need of a few test subjects. As their previous batch of regents consisted mainly of psych ward patients and generally the clinically insane, Murkov realized that their objectives of brainwashing were futile with these kinds of patients. Instead, opting for people that Easterman describes as meaningless, essentially people that are viewed in society as vanquishable, unloved and unformed. If they went missing, nobody would notice, care, or more importantly, investigate where they went. This is where the player comes in. We are the described meaningless people. And the first point of action for Murkov after acquiring their new regent is to install a pair of night vision goggles onto their skull which more times than not is actually second hand gross after which you will be awarded with your new domicile fitted with weights a sink and whatever the hell you want to spend your murkov dollars on after they reward you for your efforts in the trials but to be honest this is probably a lot nicer than whatever the regents were living in prior to being abducted so i guess we can find a single positive in this whole thing now that we have the brief background of how you ended up here at the facility, let's get into the very first trial that Murkov sends their freshly acquired regents. After being formed into a group of four, you, along with your three other regents, are sent via a train system to the warehouse. During the ride, you'll be bound to cheers and shown a brief video on screen from Dr. Easterman mixed in with subtle brainwashing images that are played throughout the facility. He will explain to you that your job during the trial is that of the exterminator, enforcing that only what they tell you is true, before explaining that there is a snitch inside the prison, preparing to testify against Murkov's truth. And if we want freedom, we need to go and kill the snitch. As the TV screens go back to the roof, a chemical agent is released inside the carriage that causes hallucinogenics. Now, it's important to understand and to remember that Murkov is attempting to create a type of super soldier that will do whatever they ask of them. So the idea that the regents will be rewarded for killing a snitch that is supposedly responsible for trying to testify against Murkov is most likely viewed as a suitable starting place to condition the regent's mind to serve Murkov and his interests. After our tripping out sessions, we arrive at the first of Easterman's trials. Snitches get stitches. As you will notice, the surrounding area is filled with mannequins and television screens that create quite a scene much like you would see in a movie. However, not everybody inhabiting this space is a friendly mannequin that can't hurt you. It's also filled with bodies of previous regents that have failed, and numerous people that will attempt to attack you, hinder you, and just straight up murder you. While it's not directly stated who the smaller enemies are, it is alluded to being the first generation of Murkov's regions, comprising mostly of asylum and psych ward patients that Easterman failed to properly convert using his brainwashing program due to there being too much trauma already. Once inside, we make our way to the security room and we can set our eyes on the very first prime asset, essentially Easterman's failed test subjects of the early stages of Project Lathe but instead using them to test the regents. We will be doing a video breaking down who these people are more in depth in the future, so keep an eye out for that. Anyway, this is Leland Coyle. He's absolutely nuts, thinks that he's the commanding officer of this place, and gets a little too excited at the idea of electrocuting people with his shock baton, which is his weapon of choice. He is currently guarding the snitch and we need to get to the snitch and begin wheeling him to his demise. But Murkov has understandably put a lot of obstacles in our way, like turning off the power, which requires the regents to head down into the basement to refuel and rewire the generators. Coil and numerous other ex-regents will be scattered throughout, so the whole thing can be incredibly dangerous. You can even find numerous instances where Murkov employees are watching you as you make your way through the facility taking notes on your performance. Once your team has managed to refuel these generators, you'll need to make your way back upstairs to the snitch and begin pushing him along the rails. Eventually, you'll be blocked by a gate, 
If you look towards the television, it will show the regents a symbol that will represent the correct body that contains a key. Those keys will open gates throughout the police station that will allow you to continue pushing the snitch throughout. If you get the body wrong, then you will instead pull a device out that will give you a bit of an electric shock. Something that I found interesting in the first trial was a security guard stationed outside the trial's confines. He mentions that if you get close enough that the walls are not there to keep you in. Instead, it's to keep the outside world out, further signalling the need for secrecy for the whole endeavour to work. A few gory searches later that I will unfortunately have to blur because of, um, yeah, YouTube, we can get the gates that will allow us to get the snitch all the way through the facility, while Coyle will do everything in his power to stop you. At the end of the line is a giant electrical chamber that acts like an electric chair. Four handles are available to use in order to create a charge that you need to hold the handle down for long enough to cause a fatal reaction on the snitch. Once you have yourself a fried snitch, you can make your way back to the shuttle while trying to avoid the people that are ultimately there to kill you along the way. And once you make it back successfully, you've officially completed the very first trial that Murkov has set out for you, eliminating a threat that was attempting to expose Murkov's interests already planting the brainwashing seed into the mind of the regent. Depending on your rating, Easterman will speak to you afterwards, as you are sent to the evaluation room to be cleaned, stripped of your items and monitored before being released back into the sleeping quarters with the other participants. Murkov gives the regent a form of currency that can be used to purchase new items for their room and person, after each trial as well. However, that is not the final task of the Snitches Get Stitches program. There are two MK challenges included for the Regent, the first of which is Cancel the Autopsy, which sends the Regents back to the facility that is hosting Leland Coyle. Easterman briefly mentions on the ride that it doesn't matter what it is that you serve, whether it be a yearly salary, possibly an appetite, a passion, or even an actual god in heaven. You have to choose a master before asking to show him how we serve. When we arrive, we can find a few people hanging upside down, above the grinder. These are described as agents, and it is reinforced that corpses offer forensic evidence, and Murkov is essentially asking you to help turn that evidence into, um, well, sludge. The task is simple. You collect the keys in the different rooms, much like you did in the first trial, unlock the levers that will lower the agents. Once again, the corridors and rooms are filled with numerous dangers that can quite easily end a region's participation in a heartbeat, but once you collect the keys and do as you're told, you can once again head back for the evaluation. And this is the new daily life for a Murkov region, forced to abide by the rules of Dr. Easterman until it becomes second nature. The third and final requirement of the Snitches Get Stitches program is to sabotage the lockdown. This tells the regents to return power to the facility by repairing the generators and enabling their escape from prison, which in hindsight seems really counterintuitive on Murkov's part. I mean, teaching your own prisoners how to escape captivity, but uh, given Murkov's end goal was to send these regents out to the, you know, the public and utilize them on missions that could possibly get them captured, I suppose it makes sense. I won't go much more into the third challenge since it's pretty straightforward, but that is the total of what encompasses the story and task provided to you in the Snitches Get Stitches program about last trials. You along with three other regions are sent once again via the train system to a brand new facility that holds the prime asset of Mother Gooseberry. She will be the main danger as we traverse our way through the amusement park of horror and death. We get Dr. Easterman once again speaking to us during our journey as he mentions that we, the regent, are an adult, but the youth will not obey our orders and must be corrected, before saying that there are children murdering adults in the root canal and they need to be punished. Now, don't freak out, I will quickly clarify that the children being spoken about are simply hypothetical and are only mannequins and dolls, but the underlying theme in regards to the brainwashing is as serious as you could imagine. And once we finally arrive at the set, which is actually named Futterland, which can actually be found on posters and signs around the park, we can see just what levels Murkov is willing to go to in order to create an immersive experience for their regents. And I think you have to salute the effort, as incredibly terrifying as it might be. We can see Mother Gooseberry parading above the door as she is dancing with a mannequin. And her quirk is the fact that she has this little duck puppet in her hand which she calls Dr. Futterman, hence the name of the amusement park. And Dr. Futterman is really good at removing people's faces, 
and she demonstrates that to the guests as they enter the amusement park. A fun little thing that you can find as you traverse the landscapes of Fuddleland is numerous mannequins and people will have skin faces that she literally leaves scattered all around the place. Once we manage to enter the park, we will once again be joined by various failed ex-regents from earlier versions of Project Lathe, much like we did in the police department. But the amusement park is full of everything that you could imagine. Rides, games, tickets, or even a diner. Except for the gory outlast kind of fun. Our very first job is to unlock the gates to the area called the Root Canal. In order to get entry, the regents must collect tickets by playing the carnival games. But instead of using balls, you're using human hearts. Once you complete the game, you take your ticket to the fancy ticket collection robot, and after four tickets, you're actually allowed in. And our gracious host, Mother Gooseberry, is there once again to greet us. I will have to blur most of the room for YouTube, but it's an absolute mess up there, and she is once again demonstrating just how dangerous she is. A little ride car appears, and we need to wheel it throughout the root canal to uh, punish the children at the end. Again, they're not real, just some mannequins that are treating a real person very poorly in their cart. The ride is supposed to be a kind of water ride, and you will need to re-engage the water flow so the cart can continue to be pushed throughout the area. And speaking of area, much of the ride is dressed to look much like the human mouth, but with rotting teeth and such, hence the root canal name. But it also has a lot of things that you would expect in a child's toy box, like building blocks and rubber duckies. So it's not all horrifying. Once you push the cart all the way to the end, you'll find yourself a giant grinder that you'll need to push the mannequins into in order to punish them. And after doing so, the regents will need to hit the burners and flee the ride, and hopefully the trial altogether. Once they arrive back, Murkov will once again clean and strip the region of all items and return them to the sleeping room, with a big wad of Murkov dollars to go and buy that badass robot action figure, and then send them back to do even more deadly trials, this time to punish the miscreants. This is largely a similar premise, the regents will arrive back to Fuddleland, but this time the place has a quick coat of paint on the exterior walls, which will distinguish the areas a little bit more. There is a grinder in the main room, and there are four child mannequins that are creating trouble throughout Fuddleland. Your job is to find them, deactivate them, and ultimately return the mannequins into splinter form using the grinder. And they once again will have to deal with Mother Gooseberry as she is not very fond of regents coming into her place and disrupting the children's mannequins. Also, a fun little addition to the level is that the regents typically, if you don't want to be seen, will need to sneak around to not be noticed. However, once you have the mannequin in your hands, they will have a little voice box inside of them that will yell out for help and ask the failed regents and Mother Gooseberry to, uh, you know, murder you. Revealing your location for everyone around you, so this is a little more dangerous for the group. Once you've ground all the miscreants, you can head back onto the train and head back to the sleeping quarters. Some very nerve-wracking arm wrestling later and you're ready to be sent back out for the third and final challenge of the Grind the Apples program. Open the gates. You will return to Fuddleland and you will need to unlock the gates preventing you from leaving. Much like the third challenge of Snitches Get Stitches, which teaches the regions how to escape from a captivity environment. Eastman speaks to us again on the journey and asks us to view ourselves as a spider, building a trap to ensnare the future. The underlying tone of the Grind the Apples program is that of obedience. While Snitches Get Stitches taught the regents to defend Murkov and its interests from people looking to expose them, Grind the Bad Apples teaches the regents the importance of obedience and what can happen if you don't, or rather, what you should do to somebody that isn't. It's pretty messed up overall. But I mean, you sort of come to expect it from this universe. Much of this challenge takes place in the background area of Fuddleland, which has a whole bunch of wires scattered throughout that needs to be deactivated in order to open up the gates. And once you do, you'll get your grade and will be ready to head back once again. After a quick wind down in the sleeping quarters with your fellow regents, you'll be placed back onto the train system by the Murkov employees. Dr. Eastman once again gives us some words of advice, speaking about how even education and faith must follow mandates, and reinforcing the children will learn obedience, a similar lesson that was learned in the Grind the Apples program. He says to shape them young and they'll be Murkovs for life. Very creepy if you ask me, and some words pop up on the screen explaining some of the core principles. No drugs, no rebellion, and no lust. So, I guess Easterman draws the line between those and straight up murder and brainwashing, but sure. Also, once again for clarity, the children mentioned are just mannequins living their best life. Once we arrive, we get to see the set that has been created for the third program, and this time it is an orphanage. 
If you play through the introduction sequence of Outlast Trials, you might have visited this place already, but this time we return with friends, and as you could imagine, from the outside of the orphanage, it actually doesn't look that bad. But once you get inside, wow wee, it's a mess. And whoever decided on the interior design needs to get fired, because holy crap those things are some nightmare fuel paintings. Our first objective is to start turning off some of the security systems, in order to open the gates around the orphanage. More importantly, the children's dormitories, as they have other technical tuners to unlock the gates to the outside area. Once we arrive at the dorms, we can find mannequins placing their heads in piles of uh, sugar and baking soda. Totally not drugs of any kind. And also this thing, which I can honestly say gave me about three heart attacks as I ventured throughout this area. And speaking of heart attacks, we got Mother Gooseberry again, wreaking havoc in rooms and hallways of the orphanage which I must say is probably even more scary than the carnival since it's now in much smaller spaces and corridors instead of the open areas of the carnival. After doing all the tuning, the regents open up the gate to the classrooms, which will require you to go throughout the classrooms changing the film on the projector to some classic Murkov propaganda. I have to be really selective about what footage I show throughout this because the entire orphanage is filled with nun mannequins in very risque attire and positions, so I apologize if this part is a little chopped up. Anyway, once the propaganda has been placed in the classrooms for the children to enjoy, it is now our job to head back to the reception desk and open up the gate that will lead us out to the chapel. And this area is where things are about to get really crazy for the regents, and what is quite possibly the craziest thing I have done or seen in a horror game. And for YouTube's sake, I will need to blur much of it, but I'll try to explain the best I can for you. Inside the chapel you could easily be mistaken at first for its very wholesome scene. Disco lights while child mannequins dance and play between the pews. It's only when the lights turn on that we realise the true horror of the situation. This is an individual that is viewed as a non-believer, and in this case we aren't talking about God but instead Murkov. He is tied up at the cross, and the regents are tasked with collecting the saw handles while also turning on the generators to power the mannequins. And once we arrive, the regents need to, um, chop his legs off, essentially. Trust me, it's really graphic, and Outlast really turned up the gross meter for this particular program. But once that's all finished, we need to turn on the mannequins as they will have a big old dance in the fake blood and eat from the, uh, offerings that the regents just gave them. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Now it's time to flee the orphanage and head back to the facility to be judged and placed back into the sleeping quarters for a round of arm wrestling to cope with what just happened. Our job, however, is not over. We must head back for our next challenge, which is to feed the children. This will take us back to the orphanage, but instead of being inside the main building, we will make our way to the cafeteria, where all of the mannequins have been placed, ready for their Monday night dinner. What is for dinner, you might ask? Well... Let's, let's just call it Mystery Meat Mondays. And we need to go around the outside areas and search for the main stock ingredient for our soup. In this case, it's bleach, which is an incredibly deadly and toxic concoction, probably even for mannequins. Once the bottles have been collected, we can take them back and fill the pot and eventually serve the food using the graciously set out pipeline that will take the soup straight to the tables. The mannequins will dance around with excitement, while the regents will jump around flailing for their life as Mother Gooseberry is coming to murder them. We get out of there and are now only left with a single challenge left, Foster the Orphan, which will put us back at the orphanage, but this time we need to tune all of the frequencies to allow us to save the children from Mother Gooseberry and find them a new home. Or if you're me, just hide in the cafeteria freezer for 10 minutes while the other regents get that job done for you. This is actual footage, by the way. It's not a still image. Remember folks, work smarter, not harder. Once we get the lobby gate open, it will allow the children to flee and also allow us to flee for the very last time. At least from a trial perspective. But that is the final challenge that Murkov has in place for the Cleanse the Orphans program. That, however, is not the final thing that Regents will be tasked to do. But I will give you a small overview here. Essentially, there is a thing called Program X, which needs to be completed. It's redoing the same three programs again, but on a higher difficulty. But if you can finish everything, then you get to unlock enough tokens to be reborn. What does that mean? Well, we will be releasing the big main story explain video for Outlast Trials in the next few days. 
that will explain absolutely every background detail of the story from Outlast Trials, including the ending of the game. So, keep an eye out for that. If you enjoyed our little mini-series on the Trials, please let us know down in the comments below, because we're trying out some new things to see if you guys enjoy them. Leave a like as it helps out a lot for the channel, and maybe even consider subscribing for more content in the future. Until next time, peace.